Amen. Let's stand together on this Lord's Day. Amen. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus and give him praise. And uh, we know that the world is celebrating their things today and celebrating sin and immorality. But we have come to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. For he alone is worthy of our praise and all the glory and honor that we can give him. Amen. So today, would you lift up your voice and would you worship God with everything you have? Amen. And let's give him our best today. Others are still finding their way in. I'm sure others have been delayed by traffic. Amen. But we are going to enter into the presence of the Lord. I want our wonderful associate pastor, Pastor Ose, to come. And I think it's probably more important than ever today to open this service with prayer. Can we do it together? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The Spirit of the Lord is here this morning. You believe that? Yes. Lift your hands. Give Him glory. Give Him glory. Worship Him. Worship the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the mighty God. Lift Him up. Lift Him higher. He's higher. Higher than all the gods. He's higher. He's the great God. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up this morning. Lift him up. Lord, we lift you up this morning. We lift you high this morning. Above every other gods. Above every other belief. Above every other thing on the earth. We give you praise this morning. In Jesus' name. Lord, we just bring this service before you this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way. We gather before you today. The Bible says they gather before you in Shiloh. The land was subdued before them. The land, the land of Winnipeg, this land, this city, we bow before you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we stand here and we said, only your name be glorified in this place. Only your name be glorified in this land. In the mighty name of Jesus, because you are the true and the only God that we know. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we come today, we pray you give everyone here the spirit of worship. That we will worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus. We take authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Against every spirit, every foul spirit. That is not every spirit that is not of God, that is not of light. We come against you this morning. We command you, we bind you, and we cast you out of this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit hovering land the land. Today, we come against you, we bind you. In the name of Jesus. We bind the gate of hell. The activity of gate of hell against this land in the name of Jesus. We cover this place with the blood of Jesus Christ. We cover this land with the blood of Jesus. We cover this place. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the place, over the whole place in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No one will come to this place today and go back the same. We pray, oh God, for change of life, change of situations in the name of Jesus, change of level in the name of Jesus. We will grow from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from a level of anointing to the another level of anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. As many that are spiritually blind that are here today, we pray you open your eyes that they will behold your light in the service of today in the name of Jesus. As many that are weak this morning, I pray strength upon you 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Strength to worship, strength to serve in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way. Just lift your hands, people of God, and give God praise. One more time, just give him praise. Just worship him. Just worship him as we welcome the worship, the worship team. the glory of the Lord is going to raise from this house as men and women out there are, are glorying and, and, and praising and raising up, I don't know, something else out there. Can we have a couple people who are going to commit to raising up the name of Jesus in this house? To raising up that blood-stained banner this morning and, and forevermore. Amen? Amen, amen, amen? Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us.
Jesus, Jesus reigns. 
established. Your kingdom is without end. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shatayana. Oh, one more time, Pastor Reed. To God you reign. Come on, lift your voice one last time.
as there's breath in my lungs, as long as I'm able to declare that Jesus is Lord, I'm going to declare that he is king over my life. I'm going to declare that he is king over my circumstances. I'm going to declare that he is king over all, not some, but all. And I know that one day, every knee, every knee is going to bow. If you're sitting in this congregation right now and you can't say that Jesus is your king, one day you will have to bow and you will have to declare that he is king. Every knee will bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus, that Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just continue to praise him. We want to praise him. We praise you, God. That's why we came. We give you all the glory. And that's what we want rising from this house today. praise to rise from this house even louder than the noise outside of this church right now we want our praises to ring loud 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 in the city of Winnipeg
Fill me up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, God. Till we're full and
and celebrating sin and what's anti-Bible. We're in here and we celebrate the name of Jesus. We celebrate the cross of Calvary. We celebrate the blood of Jesus. We celebrate the sacrifice of the cross. Hallelujah. 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 For he is worthy. I stand. I stand. One more time, clap your hands to the Lord. If you're thankful to be saved, you're thankful to be in church on a Sunday, you're thankful to be lifting up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no place I would rather be than in his house and in his presence, because in his presence there's fullness of joy, and at his right hand there's pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're just going to leave you guys just a cup with a couple quick announcements um, that that's coming up in the next couple weeks or so. Oh my goodness, my shoes untied! Hallelujah. <laughs> right, it's all right. Hallelujah. So let's not forget. Actually, it's uh, some exciting changes are coming up. Some exci- exciting things. Pastor Wayne kind of made mention to it um, the last couple weeks ago. But let's not forget on June. S- uh, 16th is the men's ministry, and we're going to be meeting here, I believe, and we're studying the book of Romans, and uh, it's going to be a great time. So that's at 7 o'clock p.m., uh, and that's on a Friday, and that's going to be right here at Believer's Church. And then going forward a little bit, June 23rd, I want you to mark that in your calendars. Brother Rick and Sister Shauna are starting a marriage ministry in this church. Hallelujah. And it's called Better Together. Amen. How many know that we're better together? Marriages are better together. And in fact, marriage, family, home, that's God's design. That's God's idea. And what's happening in the world actually today is, is, uh, is I'm just going to tell you, it's Satan's plan to destroy God's design. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Satan's yeah. plan to destroy what God intended. And, uh, you, you know, you might say that's hate speech or that's confrontational, but I didn't say that. Jesus said the that. The Bible said on, that. And I want to stand with Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> So uh, marriage ministry on um, uh, June 23rd at 7 o'clock p.m. But it's also for couples who might be courting or uh, are pre-married or are going in to uh, going to be married because that's why Christians date, by the way. Amen. <laughs> so it's going to be a great time. Actually, hey, I- I'm not even married and I'm going to go. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so uh, we encourage you uh, to go check that out. And we know that Brother Rick and Sister Shauna have been involved in this sort of thing for, for many years. And it's going to be a great time. And uh, there's going to be, I believe, some, uh, it's like a date night, some snacks. Um, and it's just going to be awesome. So we encourage you to make it out to that. And uh, come check it out. We know that you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. And then the very next day on June 24th, um, many of you know we've been doing the youth uh, ministry and things like that. So on Saturday, June 24th, we're going to be taking the youth to actually, it's called Activate Games. It's on Naren. And then we're going to be having pizza here afterwards. But, you know, we don't have a young adults ministry. So we, we want to kind of open it up. And um, maybe this will turn into something. But we want to invite the younger, maybe 35s and under, um, to that Activate event. That's on Saturday, June 24th. We're going to be meeting here at the church at 1.30 on Saturday, June 24th. And then the actual event is at 2.15 p.m., um, 
If you have any more questions, you can come talk to me. There's a sign-up sheet out there in the foyer for those who are 35 to 18, like young adult range, and we just want to open it up to you guys too, uh, just to have that that fellowship and to build those connections with the younger people because how many know sometimes young people feel alone and they come to church and they think it's for old people but it's actually for everybody and it's our job as um, every generation to actually reach out to the young people and pass the baton and reach out to them and show them that Jesus is for them too hallelujah so that's June 24th Saturday Uh, we're meeting here at 1 30 and then June 30th is the women's ministry and um, it's going to be a night of praise and worship. The doors open at 6 o'clock p.m., and I believe that's on a Friday. They didn't give me the, the days here. It's on a Friday, and um, that's at 6 o'clock p.m. The doors open, but it, it's going to be a night of praise and worship, and it's going to be a great time. And I actually forgot to mention on the marriage ministry, there is child care for that first one. Actually, Sister Zanya, she's going to be taking care of your children, and she's not even getting paid for it. Amen? So... So hallelujah. Come and let's pack the house out and let's be blessed by the marriage ministry in Jesus' name. And the regular announcements for the week, Tuesday, Celebrate Recovery at 6. Wednesday night's the Purple Book. We're talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And on Saturday is prayer meeting. So God bless you guys. Um, We are looking forward to the upcoming week. And I just want to read us a scripture here. Um, It's in 1 Timothy, and and Paul's talking to his protege, his... um, son in the gospel, Timothy, and he says this, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. So that, hallelujah, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Paul says to the, uh, his young preacher, he says, not to put our hope in uncertain riches, but to put our hope in God who gives everything for enjoyment. God is good and he, he allows us to in, uh, enjoy blessing and he enjoys blessing us. And Paul also says to do good and be generous and willing to share. How many know that one of the marks of a, a Christian is generosity? It's... Um, loving people. It's being generous. Um, hallelujah. Um, certain preacher I know of, like 1800s preacher, the guy, when he died, he, he, he could have had a bunch of money. I believe it was John Wesley, but I think they, he had like $30 and, and two like silver spoons, and this guy could accommodate. If it was 2023, he would have been like flying a jet or something, like a prosperity preacher. But he said, um, if you give to the kingdom, it lasts forever. Jeans yeah. last for a, a year, shirt lasts for a year, a car part lasts for a limited amount of time. But anything we do for the kingdom lasts forever. And when we have that in mind, when we give to his kingdom, he enables us to be a blessing to other people. And in the world we live in today, you know, it's all about us and it's all about what I can get and how I can prosper and how I can benefit. But the Bible doesn't comprehend that. He wants to bless us so we can be a blessing. Some, Psalm 20, verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Lord, yes, if yes. that's 2023, some trust in social media, in parades outside, in Justin Trudeau, but we trust in the name of Jesus. And we trust that when he gives, when we give to him, it shall be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So Sister Diane's at the back. If you want to give by debit or credit, the ushers are going to bring the offering plates up here to the front. And uh, we can also go to the Tithely app in the App Store or the Play Store. And uh, just keep that in mind as you guys give today. I'm given to be a blessing so I can bless other people. Amen. We're going to sing another course. Sunday school, you guys are dismissed to your classes. And the youth class is dismissed to your class in the back as well. God bless you guys in Jesus' name. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth
wanted to take a second. Uh, I forgot to mention it earlier. Can you, I get the Connect card slide up there? If we have any guests in here, can we give our guests a hand this morning? We welcome you to Believer's Church. We trust that you won't be a guest for much longer. Uh, if you have your cell phone on you, you can scan this QR code, and it's going to redirect you to the Believer's Church. It's a Connect card, and we want you to fill that card out and bring it to the hospitality desk after the service, and they're going to give you a gift. And if you don't have a cell phone or you're not about technology, you can get a Connect card out there and um, fill it out, bring it to the desk after, and we got a gift for you uh, waiting there. And we just wanted to make mention there's a cry room in the back. If maybe you have a little one who starts crying during the preaching, we know that's a little distracting sometimes. So we just ask you to bring bring uh, your child in there if that happens. Pastor Wayne's going to come at this time. God bless you guys in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Crying babies, go to the cry room. Crying adults, come to the altar. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing this chorus before we preach. Let's sing it together. can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Yes, I do. I want more of you, Set a fire, set a fire down in my soul, that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, Set a fire. You make this your prayer before we go to the word this morning. I want more of you, God. Yes, I do. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. I set a fire. Set a fire. Oh, I feel that. I want more of you, God. 
name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you would all just stand with me, I've got two scriptures to read as we open this up this morning. Exodus chapter 20, verse 18. As we go to the word of the Lord at this time. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 18. Hallelujah. It says, Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. To give you a little background, this is when Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments in the mountain. Verse 19, then they said to Moses, who were they? The people of God, the Israelites. Then they said to Moses, you will speak with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. I want to preach to you this morning on this topic, send your sound. Send your sound. Father, I need your help. Touch this body. Quicken my mind. Help me to speak, Lord, the oracle as the oracle of God. Let me speak, Lord, this word as you have downloaded it into my spirit over these last two days. And I pray, God, that your kingdom would come in this room. And before we leave this place, your will will be done. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Everybody said Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. God began downloading this scripture uh, and, and these scriptures and this thought and this message in my heart a few days ago and last night in prayer. It was just coming to me uh, powerfully. I woke up this morning early. I was on call with my job all night. I woke up very early this morning. It was on my mind all morning. And I grabbed my iPad and I began to just write down some different scriptures. And time was going by. And uh, I, uh, I said, Lord, I, I got to get out of here. I got to get to church. I'll finish this in my office. But I just couldn't get away from it. And uh, usually I leave the house around 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And 9 o'clock came and at 9.30. I said, okay, I'll leave by 9.30. 9.30 came. God was still speaking with me. And, and uh, all right, Lord, by 10 o'clock, by 10 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock came. I'm, Lord, help me. It was about quarter after 10 when I walked out the door. And uh, I got here literally 15 minutes before church started this morning, which is very, I've never done that, I don't think, in the 12 years, almost 12 years that I've been here. So I do feel like I'm coming this morning with a word from the Lord for Believer's Church today. Amen. Last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday. We've seen a tremendous move of God in this place and around the altar. And I wanted to, uh, I, I wanted to preach something this morning that would uh, stir us and change us as we always try to do here. And the Lord really began to impress this on my mind and on my heart. The sound. How many know there's a sound of God? There's a sound of Pentecost. Hello? There's a sound of Pentecost. There's a sound of the moving of God. When God moves, I know there, there are times, that there's, there's quiet times. I get that. I, I, you don't need to, to send me a letter or send me scriptures. I, I get all of that. But I will tell you, when God is moving in power, there is a sound that accompanies it. There's a sound of prayer. There's a sound of worship. There's a sound of repentance. Hello? There's a sound of people crying out to God. The, the Word of God describes groanings that, that can't be uttered. I've, I've done that. I've heard that. I've been in, in, in services where people literally groaned in the Spirit, amen, as they hungered after the move of God, and God was pouring out His Spirit. And so I read to you this morning how God was speaking, and He was bringing the Ten Commandments, and and uh, there was a time when God would boom out of the sky with a voice that would shake the earth. And there are times, I don't know, there's been times I've, I've actually kind of wanted God to talk to me like that. 
Lord, just, just let me know. I want to hear from you. Just speak to me, Lord. Just. But there was a time when he would speak, and it was so because God is so great and so powerful and so majestic and holy, we can't comprehend him. When he did speak in this manner, his voice was not a whisper. Hello? Are you, are you awake? I have to start serving coffee with these sermons. <laughs> so he, he, when he would speak, there would be a voice that would come, and there with that voice, it would be a booming voice. The earth would shake. There would be lightning. There would be thunder. It was a terrifying event. And so the people of God, the people of God, the children of Israel went to Moses and they could see the thundering and the lightning happening in the mountain. And they, they knew that God was speaking and they went to Moses and they said, you know what? We will trust you. You go, you hear what he has to say and you bring it back to us. We don't want to, we don't want to talk to him directly lest we die. From the beginning of time, people did not want to hear the voice of God. Praise God. From the beginning of time, people did not want to hear the voice of God. They wanted that voice of God filtered. Filtered through somebody else. Filtered in a way that it could be easy to hear. Filtered in a way that wasn't so terrifying. Filtered in a way that it wasn't so scary. Filtered in a way that it was just, they, they could accept it a little better than the way God was presenting himself. Come on, somebody. And so they said, you go and you hear it and, and you come back and you present it to us in a better way than what God is doing it himself. Can I tell you, not much has changed in 2023 except we demand a bigger filter. The world is demanding a bigger filter. Preacher, don't you preach too hard, don't you? No, no, no. You can't, you can't say those words. You can't preach against that. You can't say that. I had somebody get mad at me recently because I preached on the blood. And they said, I'll never go back to that church because he preached that God killed animals for sacrifice. Well, if you read your Bible, there was a lot of animals sacrificed. And so we don't want to hear those things. We don't want to hear about the blood. We don't want to hear about sin. We don't want to hear about repentance. Uh, preacher, you just, you just put on a better filter and you just tickle my ears. I think the Word of God talks a little bit about that. Uh, people will have itching ears and looking for just preachers who can, can tickle their ears and, and make them feel good about themselves. And, and we want preachers who will give us TED Talks and fireside chats and sit on a stool with skinny jeans with our knees hanging out and, and, uh, and, and just make me feel good about myself. I've come to tell you, in case you're wondering, I didn't come to make you feel good about yourself today. i come to make you feel good about the God that you serve who will never leave you, never forsake you, never fail you, and never let you down. Praise God. And so we, we want God through a filter. We want God to be presented to us in a more palatable way. Way because surely a gracious God would never send anybody to hell. And surely a good God and a loving God would never tell me that I was wrong. Because he knows. I heard the preacher on TV tell me. He knows just how special I am. And so he would never tell me how wrong I was. He would never tell me that I was going against his word. He would never fa make me feel bad about myself. And so we put a muzzle on God and we demand that the preacher preach to us what we want to hear. I am thankful for Believer's Church who seems to like it the harder the better. <laughs> 
Praise God. And I'm thankful for this church that I can preach the word of God. And I know somebody's going to shout amen and somebody's going to clap their hand and somebody's going to say, preacher, preach to me. Why? Not because we just want to be whipped, but because we want to be right with God. We want to have the unadulterated, unadulterated word of God preached to us without fear or favor, not being watered down. Don't filter the word of God, but somebody preach to me the truth of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. If I can get a little bit more monitor, brother. I don't want to hurt them out there, but I can't hear myself up here. Hallelujah. And so we want to preach the word of God as it is. We don't want to add to it. We don't want to take from it. We want to keep it pure. We want to keep the, the holiness of it intact. But men and brethren, the world is still saying, what must we do to be saved? And the answer is still the same today as it was on the day of Pentecost. You've got to repent. You need to be water baptized. You need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, I come to tell you the sound of heaven hasn't changed. Oh Lord, I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry. Matthew 3, and Matthew 3, and verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this he was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair. You can picture that. With a leather belt. He was a fashionable guy. Around his waist. And his food was locusts or grasshoppers and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the regions round the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in Jordan, confessing their sin. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to, yourself, to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear fru good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me, talking about Jesus Christ... He who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. John said, I'm not the one who was coming, but I have come to prophesy about one who's coming. I am not the Messiah, but I've come to prepare the way for the Messiah. There is one coming who is mightier than I, who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Praise the Lord. John was the last of the Old Testament prophets, the Old Covenant prophets. Although he was uh, it, uh, recorded in the New Testament, uh, amen, we understand the New Testament didn't take effect until the testator died and the testator was Jesus. And when he died, the New Testament, the New Covenant uh, came into effect. And so John the Baptist uh, was the last of the Old Testament prophets and he prophesied about Jesus. Woo! Lord, help me. I'm trying to go somewhere this morning. He was the forerunner of Jesus. Prepare the way. Make the way straight. Matthew 11 and verse 1. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples that he departed from there to teach and preach in their cities. And when John, they had thrown John the Baptist in prison. When John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. 
the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And as they parted, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, what did you expect to, to go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? Did you go out and expect to, to see some flimsy guy out there? Who did you think John the Baptist was? Because they were questioning about John. How dare he question Jesus? How dare he ask these things? Uh, he said, no, John is not some fly-by-night. Uh, he's not some shaky guy. John, a man, uh, is, is a man of God. He's a prophet of all. This is what Jesus said about John. He said, what did you go out to there to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among these born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. That's what Jesus said about John. But John says there's one coming that's greater than me. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And he said there, there's no one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the laws prophesied until John. What he was saying there, if you're going to be in the kingdom, if you're going to have the kingdom, if you're going to do kingdom things, you've got to push your way in. You've got to push your way in through the doubt, through the fear, through the crowd, through the religious faith. Pharisees and Sadducees, if you're going to lay hold on the kingdom of God in your life, you've got to push your way in. Push your neighbor and say, I'm pushing my way in. Woo! I'm pushing my way in. Amen. I'm going to take it by force. I want to be part of the kingdom of God. I'm going to take it by force today. Acts 7, 51, you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Lord have mercy, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets, now listen to me now, John the Baptist was a prophet. He was the last of the Old Testament prophet. Jesus said himself, all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And now in Acts, the writer is saying to the religious folks, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised. Turn your neighbor and say, don't be stiff-necked. Uncircumcised in heart and ears. Tell your other neighbor, open your ears, open your heart. You always resist the Holy Spirit just like your fathers did, just like your granddaddy did. Just like your great granddaddy did. What are you talking about? My dead daddy and great granddaddy. What did they do? They, they said this Which of all the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. And so the prophets of God, amen, were executed, were tortured, were imprisoned. Jeremiah was thrown in a dungeon up to his, up to his waist in, in filth. And he said, I'm not even going to talk about God anymore. I'm not even going to say the name of God anymore. But he said, I could only do it for so long, Sister Shauna, because it was like fire shut up in my bones and I couldn't help myself. I had to prophesy. I had to testify. I had to tell somebody about the goodness of Is there anybody in this room you got a little fire shut up in your bones this morning? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to have a good altar call because I about two-thirds of the congregation just looked at me. I'm going to try that again. Does anybody have a little fire in you today? Anybody have a little Holy Ghost fire in you today? It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. It's down in my heart. It's down in my feet. It's in my hands. It's in my heart. It's all over me. It's keeping me alive. Today, everybody wants to be a prophet. Lord, help us. 
I don't know how many people I have met come up to shake my hand and praise the Lord. I'm prophet so-and-so. Oh, well, nice to meet you. People come to me constantly. I'm, I just want you to know, Pastor Buster, I'm very prophetic. Oh, okay, that's, that's, that's good to know. And they have on their Facebook names, prophet so-and-so. Now, I'm not against prophets. I, I thank God for prophets. I have, I have true blue prophets of God in my life that I consider them to be the prophet of God who flow in that gifting, who walk in that office. But if you're a prophet, you don't have to announce you're a prophet. Your gift will make room for yourself. If you're a prophet, prophesy. Hello? Praise the Lord. I'm apostle, reverend, doctor, bishop. I got nothing against apostles. I know people who I believe are true blue apostles. I've got bishops in my life, people who I esteem in the elder of a bishop. I, I thank God for these, these people. I thank God for, for these ministries. But we live in an era where everybody wants to be a prophet. Can I tell you this? True prophets are not popular. Because a true prophet doesn't care about what your social insurance number is or the last four digits of your bank card. A true prophet has come to tell you, thus says the Lord. Praise God. So true prophets are not popular. Today, everybody wants to be a prophet, but prophets in the Old Testament had a very high fatality rate. Praise God. If they prophesied falsely, they were commanded by God to be killed. If they prophesied truly, most of the time, the people who heard the prophecies, one of them did. A lot of times, it was a lose-lose situation. But you have to be true to the Word of God. And so, he said, the prophets were murdered. The prophets were beaten. The prophets were in prison. And John the Baptist was no different. Matthew 14, 1. I'm trying to establish something here for us this morning. God spoke his own voice. People didn't want to hear it. They said, give us a prophet. God gave them prophets. They said, we don't like those guys either. We don't like those guys either. They're not filtered enough. And so they beat them, put them in prison, killed them. Matthew 14, 1, at the time, Herod, the Tetrarch, heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and these are the powers at work in him. When he heard about what Jesus was doing, they said, it's John the Baptist, because they killed John. Here's the story, verse 14, 3. For Herod had laid hold on, of John, bound him, and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother's Philip's wife, who he was sleeping with. This wasn't on days of our lives. This is in Matthew 14. Because John had said to him, verse 4, it is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Therefore, he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. So she, having been prompted by her mother, said, Give me John the Baptist's head on a platter. This young woman named Salome could have had up to half the kingdom. Half of the kingdom could have been hers. Half of the king's wealth and riches could have been hers. Half of his land, palaces, everything could have been hers. But that wicked mother of hers had told her, when he says, what can I give you? You tell that, that king, you tell, that, you tell Herod, you want the head of John the Baptist on a silver platter. And the king was sorry, verse 9. Nevertheless, because of the O's and because of those who had sat with him, he commanded to be given to her. And so he had sent and had John beheaded in prison. Listen to this. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. 
Then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went with Jesus. You have to understand, this was a birthday party. All the rulers of the nations, surrounding nations were there. All the dignitaries were there. Everybody who was somebody was at this party. They were feasting. They were drinking. They were having a great time. And in the middle of this party, in walks a servant with the head of John the Baptist on a silver platter. The historian Josephus tells tells us uh, that uh, that Herodias was so happy and excited about what they had done to John that she flipped over her table, knocked over her chair, grabbed a fork off the table, ran over to the dead preacher's head, pried open his mouth, pulled out his tongue, and stabbed it to the table with the fork. That's what they did to prophets. It was symbolic of silencing the voice of God. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't tell me I'm, I'm sinful. Don't tell me I can't do what I want to do. And so she silenced the mouth and the tongue of John the Baptist forever. Amen. Luke, uh, can I tell you this? People still try to silence preachers today. But we're getting quiet in here. People still try to silence preachers today. Well, he don't he don't preach what I like. I, I'm not giving my loony tin the offering plate. That'll teach him. He don't preach the way I like. I'm, I'm going to quit going to that church. Uh, the world has tried to silence the church because they they tell us that our preaching is hateful. Our preaching is divisive. Our preaching is is hate speech. You can't talk like that. You can't speak against those things. You can't tell people they're doing wrong in the country of. Canada, it is now illegal, amen, for me as a pastor to take one of our young people aside and tell them that God can deliver them from their perverted lifestyle. It's called conversion therapy, and it has been banned. Prayer is now conversion therapy, amen. Gospel teaching and preaching is now considered conversion therapy in the country of Canada, and I don't even know if you knew it. It just slid on in, and nobody said a word. Nobody said a word. That's how we silence God today. That's how we silence preachers today. That's how we that's how we filter, amen, the mouth of God and the voice of God in this generation. Luke 1 and 70 says, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began. God spoke by his prophets. Hebrews 1 and 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by who? By the prophets. But it's changing. Paul is talking here, or the writer of Hebrews is talking here. He has in these last days spoken to us, because remember John was the last prophet of the Old Testament. That voice has been silenced. John is dead. By this time, Jesus has died and resurrected. The Old Testament is done away with. The New Testament is now in, in power. And this is how God speaks to us today. In these last days, we are sp uh, spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Jesus, in Luke chapter 4, verse 7, he, when he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, and he stood up in the middle of the synagogue, and Jesus said this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus said, This is why I'm come is to do all of these things in the earth. But how many know that Jesus was only here for a short time? He said, I'm going away, but I'm going to say, oh, Lord, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to read you the scripture in a minute. He said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send my spirit to you. I'm going to fill you with my Holy Ghost. Amen. And the work that I've done, you are going to continue it. Oh, hallelujah. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? He's anointed me to preach the gospel. 
to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And before Jesus ascended into heaven, he handed the assignment, Brother Andy, to us. Mark 16, 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. They will drink any deadly thing and it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And in the very next scripture it says, And he ascended up into heaven. He has placed the ministry in the hands of his church. Oh, Lord, help us to have understanding here today. He spoke by the prophets in the Old Testament and into the New. But that era had passed away. Jesus spent some time on earth teaching and preparing his disciples. And then he ascended into heaven. And then he poured out the Holy Ghost. And the work continues. The voice continues. But it continues in a different way. You're not just here today to say, well, I went to church. You're not just saved to say, well, I, I, they, can, they can mark me down as being present and now I'm on my way to heaven. But you were saved to serve. You were saved to do something for God. You were saved to be Jesus' hands, feet, and voice in the earth in 2023. Amen. We are here to proclaim the kingdom of God. We are here to proclaim the good news of the death, the burial, and the resurrection. We are here today because we are the people of God, the church of God, and it is our job to give Jesus to this world. Oh, Lord, help me. John 14, 15, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. He's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you. He's talking about himself. He dwells. I've been dwelling with you. I've been walking with you. I've been teaching you. I've been talking with you. He said he dwells with you, but in a short time, I'm going to be in you. Turn your neighbor and say, is he in you? Is he in you? He said, I will not leave you orphans. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. And that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Oh, I'm going somewhere. You just don't know it just yet. Just give me a few more minutes. We're going to bring this thing in for a landing. Jesus was with us, but now in us, but is now in us, empowering us to do the work of the kingdom. Are you hearing me today? Jesus was with us for a short time. He walked with mankind. He was in the world, and the world knew him not. Amen. He was in the world for a short time, but now he is in us us and empowering us to do the work of the kingdom. Jesus said in Luke 24, 49, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power. Somebody say power. When you be endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost isn't just to make you jump. It's not just to make you dance. It's not just to give you goosebumps. You know, how many knows what the Holy Ghost goosebumps are? Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. Hey, Amen. It's not just to make you feel good, but the Holy Ghost is to give you power. You shall receive power. Power over sin. Power over hell. Power over the devil. Power over every demon. Power. 
power over everything the devil would try to bring against you. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. Here it is. The Old Testament prophets are done away with. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. Oh, Lord. But preacher, you said the prophets passed away. John the Baptist was the old, uh, the last Old Testament prophet. Uh, yeah, there are no more Old Testament prophets. Uh, there's no more John the Baptist uh, roaming around. There's a few who try. There's a few who act weird just to think, uh, get people thinking they're spiritual and dress funny. And I've seen them. I've seen them come in. We had a guy come in here one time with a long beard, big old beads on and a, and a burlap sack. And he was John the Baptist, reincarnated. No, you're not. No, you're not. John the Baptist is gone. But can I tell you, there is a new generation of sons and daughters. Hallelujah. There's a new generation of New Testament prophets. New Testament men and women of God, full of the Holy Ghost, full of the power of God, who God has filled with his spirit, not to make you sing good, dance good, look good, jump good, but to make you his witnesses. Amen. He has put his sound in your mouth. Oh, I wish somebody would stand to your feet right now and say, oh God, I want to be your witness. Is there five or ten people who would stand with me right now? God, I want to be your witness. Fill me, fill my mouth with your words. I want to be the sons and daughters that was prophesied that would come in the last days. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated just a moment longer. Amen. No, I am not John the Baptist. I am not Elijah. I am not an Old Testament prophet reincarnated, but I am a New Testament child of God, full of the Holy Ghost, baptized in water and in fire. And I've got a voice. There's a sound that's been downloaded into my spirit. It's the sound of heaven. It's the sound of revival. It's the the sound of a move of God. It's the sound, amen, of this generation coming back to Jesus Christ. Woo! I might not use the these and the thous. I might not use King James Version language, but make no doubt about it. The Holy Ghost is resident inside of me, and I am speaking thus says the word of the Lord. Lord, help me. This is not just a sermon today. God is trying to give us direction, trying to stir us up. It is not enough. It is not enough for you just to come here and sit and say, I go to Believer's Church. I'm glad you're here. We want you here. We want, a, we want another thousand more just like you here. But I'm not here. As the senior pastor today, and I'm going to get to this in just a minute. I'm trying to bring this down, but i got to finish it up. I'm not here just to make you think about how special you are and how good you are and, and to puff you up and, and make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Somebody said the job of the pastor was to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. I come this morning to afflict the comfortable a little bit. Because lukewarmness has no place in the mouth of God. He'll spit it out. He'll spit it out. It makes him sick, Brother Josiah. It makes him sick. It makes him vomit. You want to make God vomit? Then just be a lukewarm Christian. It makes him, oh, I, I know you. Pastor, you can't put your filter back on. I took my filter off before I got in this pulpit this morning. Because lukewarmness makes God just as sick in 2023 as it did in 3380. 
He said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. I'll vomit you out. God is looking for somebody to be his voice to this generation, to be his voice in your neighborhood, to be his voice in your family, to be his voice in this city, to stand up and declare, I will not compromise. I will not back down. I will be a child of God. I will stand for the truth of the word of God. I am who God says I am. I am baptized with Holy Ghost and fire. Oh, I'm one of those sons and daughters that they prophesied about. That's me. Somebody slap your chest and say, that's me. That's me. I'm the fulfillment of the prophecy. You see, the problem, you may be seated. The problem is, Pastor Ose, we're all just waiting around. Waiting for the promise to come. What if John the Baptist, what if John the Baptist would have said, I wish this forerunner would show up. Somebody's supposed to proclaim Jesus is coming. I think it could be me, but just in case, I'm going to wait and see if somebody else shows up. No. You see, the problem with the modern day church is we think we have the luxury of sitting back and waiting for somebody else. And we don't. And we don't. And we don't. And that's why there's been generations of children backslide out of church pews is because we've all been sitting back waiting for somebody else to be the voice of this generation. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Would you raise your hands in this room? God, I pray that revelation would come into this room right now. God, that they could realize, people under the sound of my voice right now, couldn't realize, Lord, that you're not waiting for somebody else to rise up. Lord, you have called them. They are the answer to the prayer. They are the answer. They are the fulfillment of the prophecy in the last days. Saith God, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughter shall prophesy. That is you and I in this room. When are you going to open your mouth and prophesy? I'm not saying get up and interrupt the service and say, thus says the Lord in two and a half, four score months. I don't even think that made any sense, but I've heard some prophecies that don't make any sense. That's not what we're saying. He said, the last day, saith God. I'll pour up my spirit, brother, I'll say, on all flesh, pastor. And your sons and your daughters are going to have the word of God in their mouth. And they're going to have the word of God in their mouth. They're going to speak the word of God. They're going to stand up for the word of God. They're going to stand up for holiness. They're going to stand up for righteousness. They're going to stand up for truth. They're going to decree and declare that the word of God is right and every man is a liar. They're going to stand and declare that God still reigns. He is still high and lifted up and his train still fills the temple. It's you and I, my friend. The word of God ought to be in us. Help me to release this word. Please stay with me. I have to finish. Luke 24 and 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, tearing the city of Jerusalem to you, being due with power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be witnesses. Acts 2, 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound. Came a sound. Revival is always preceded by a sound. A move of God is always accompanied by a sound. It's a sound that can't be 
brought on by talent or energy or charisma or that warm, fuzzy feeling you get, but it's a sound. It's a sound that comes from heaven that only God can give. In the past few months, I've had people come to me who've attended this church and they've, Pastor, I've been watching you guys, watch you online, now I've come and checked you out. And, and I, what is the secret to the presence of God here? Why do we feel here something different than I have felt? This is not just one or two people. This has been multitudes of people. Why is it different here? All I can tell you, my friend, is when you pray the right things, worship the right things, preach the right things, get in unity, there's a sound that can only come from heaven. Brother Rod, I don't ever want to get so arrogant and smug to stand here and beat my chest and say, we've got it together. I'm such a great pastor that we've just done it. We've just, we've just arrived. No, 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 because I realize that if that sound ever leaves the building, we're just playing church. There's a sound that has to be produced in heaven but then it must be echoed through each and every one of us. You say, why do I need to talk in tongues? Because it's a heavenly language. I can't teach it to you. Back of several years ago, there were people that were, that were trying to say, okay, just repeat after me. La, 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 la. T, 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 T. See my tie, tie my tie. Sell your Suzuki and buy a Honda. No, 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 no. That's crazy. None of that works because it's a language that was originated in heaven and it has to come from heaven. It has to echo through us. There's a power that comes from heaven. It doesn't come by my good works. It doesn't come by how good I am, but it comes from heaven. And when I get in touch with heaven, there's a power. There's an anointing. There's an unction that originates in heaven, and it flows through us. There's no secret to revival. I'm not getting ready to write a book, Five Secrets to Have a Revival. There's no secrets. Just open your church up for the sound of God. For the sound of heaven to come and invade your sound. Can I just be honest with you this morning? we got a lot of churches who are very concerned about having a Hillsong sound or a, or a this sound or a that sound or, or an elevation sound or whatever sound it is that they're trying to echo. My God, that's the problem. We're echoing each other and we're not echoing the sound from heaven. <laughs> preachers who re-preach other preachers' sermons Get their sermons off of the Sermon Central. No, no, no. It's got to come from heaven. The sound has got to come from heaven. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven. It was a rushing mighty wind that filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared on them divided tongues as a fire. And one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That word utterance simply means the ability. God released His sound 
on the day of Pentecost as he audibly breathed power and authority into his church. <sighs> and it filled all the house where they were sitting. I am rushing, I'm rushing to a close. Ephesians 4, therefore he says, when he ascended on high, Jesus, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. What are those gifts? Verse 11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, we all supply something to the body according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I want to show us. I don't know if, if they had time to get it in here for me or not. God's gifts to the church are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These are God's gifts to the church. I got news for you. I'm a gift to you. You might not like it, but you can't return it. But I'm not here. This is where we got to get church. And I'm, I, I, I'm not going to apologize. I just gotta, I've got to finish what God gave me. I'm not here to be Lord over God's heritage. I am here. Pastor Ose is here. Pastor Heather is here. Pastor Nidre is here. Pastor Dylan is here. For the edifying of the saints. We are not here to tear you down. We're here to build you up. We're here to help you grow. I want every one of you to be anointed of God. I do. God knows my heart. I want every one of you to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick. I want every one of you to speak in tongues. I want every one of you to function in the fruit and the gift of the Spirit. I want every one of you to be able to walk into, amen, a dark-filled room and speak the word of life and demons are jumping out the window. I want to see you edified. That's why God has given me to you. Feel you, God. I feel you. This place. God's gift to every believer is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I am here. These pastors are here to be God's voice to this local assembly. But you are here to be God's voice to the world. This room this morning is full of sons and daughters. Oh, I feel you, Jesus. <sighs> First Peter 2, 9, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Jesus said to, Matthew, to Peter in Matthew 16, 18, I say, you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven to the sons and the daughters. This is God's church. And I read something recently and I liked it. It says this, God's church isn't in trouble. Man's church is. 
God is always going to have a church. It's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. 1 Corinthians 14, 8, for if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? Listen to me now. There must be a certain sound coming from the church in 2023, and it must be God's sound. Would you stand with me in this place? Change your position as I enter into the second half of my message. <laughs> I told you we should have served coffee. I'm just teasing. We're, I'm desperately trying to end this thing, but, but there are times when God just says, forget the time and just give them the word. In Ezra chapter 3, this is where I want to close this morning, it was the second month of the second year, verse 8. They came to the house of God in Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, Jeshua, the son of Josedek, and the rest of their brethren, the priest, and the Levites, and all those who had come out of the captivity to Jerusalem, began work and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and above to oversee the work of the house of the Lord. And then Jeshua with his sons and brothers, Cadmiel and his sons and the sons of Judah, arose as one to oversee those working on the house of God, the sons of Hanadab, and their sons and the brethren, the Levites. Because the first temple had been destroyed. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord according to the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever toward Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout, and then they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and heads of the fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation, foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many aloud, shouted aloud for joy. And so the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard afar off. The old temple had been destroyed. They were building a new temple. The young people were shouting. They were rejoicing. They had never seen a temple. This was the best day of their life. But the old men were weeping because they said, this temple is not as good as the old temple. And the laughing and the crying mixed together created an undiscernible sound. Believers Church, we must have a certain sound, a clear sound. That we are not confused with who we are. We are not in doubt of where we are going. That the past behind us is not greater than the future ahead of us. And that what God is doing now is not less than what he has done before. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know you're preaching long when you kill a mic. Haggai 2, 1, in the seventh month, in the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, speak now to Zerubbabel. Remember, he's the one building the temple. The young people are happy. The old people are not. Speak to, the, speak to Zerubbabel. What am I going to say? Verse 3 of Haggai 2. Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now in comparison with it? Is this not in your eyes as Nothing. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehezadak, the high priest, and be strong, all the people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, according to the, to the word that I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear, for thus says the Lord of hosts, 
once more in this a little while. I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all the nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with my glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Would you raise your hands and receive this word of God over Believer's Church? This is a prophetic word for Believer's Church right now, today, in 2023 we're going to see glory we're going to see glory our best days are not behind us we are entering in our best days the glory of the Lord is going to be revealed amen but singers, musicians pastors, leaders saints of God there is one thing we've got to be sure and do and that's to keep the sound of heaven in this tabernacle to keep the sound of heaven in this place to keep the sound of heaven amen resonating out of us the sound of heaven the move of the Holy Ghost the glory of God the presence of the Lord must resound here Isaiah 59 19 so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him the redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob says the Lord as for me says the Lord this is my covenant with them my spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants nor from the mouth of your descendants descendants says the Lord from this time and forevermore. I'm done. I haven't done that in a mighty long time. I've preached an hour. And I could go another two. I feel the Holy Ghost. But I'm not going to. As they just play. I am calling right now in these last final moments of this service. If you're of the sons and the daughters, would you come? I'm calling sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. Those who are here for such a time as this. Those who are wanting the move of God. Those who are answering the call. I will be the voice to my generation. I will be the joy, the voice to my family. I will be the voice of God in this day and age. I will be used of God. I will be full of the power of God. I will carry the presence of God. I will defend the word of God. I will be who God has called. Oh, come on. This altar ought to be flooding right now. Come on. Let's fill this altar up this morning. The sons and the daughters. The sons and the daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. The sons and the daughters shall prophesy. Yes. The sons and the daughters. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, in this altar, would you just talk to the Lord right now? Just, just forget about me, could you please? I'm going to talk, I'm going to pray, but you, would you just somehow just shut yourself in with God right now? Lord, Lord, we don't want Believer's Church just to become a, a country club for Christians. God, we don't want Believer's Church, Lord, just to get into some religious tradition. God, in our, in our desire to grow and to impact this city, God, we don't want to just become a, a tinkling symbol, God. We don't want to just become another voice amongst voices. But we want the sound of heaven. We want the sound of heaven. In our church, in our services. And God, we want to hear the sound of heaven 
coming out of every believer, every child of God. Fill us with your word. Put your word in our mouth. Oh, rabba shata rabba rabba raka. Put your word in our mouth. Put your fire in us, God. <laughs> Put your fire in us, God. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Come on. Just cry out for more of God right now, believers. Come on. Just cry out for more of God right now. It's you and God. It's you and God. I don't care if you're a pastor, if you're, a, if you're an altar worker or so, whatever you are. Would you just cry out, God, put your word in my mouth. Put your fire in my bones. Oh, God, fill me with your spirit. Let me be a carrier, Lord, of your presence. I want to be the sons and daughters that Joel talked about. Oh God I believe I'm here for such a time as this. Hallelujah I may never preach behind a pulpit but my life will preach everywhere I go. Oh God I may never sing a special but God I will have the song of God coming out of me everywhere I go. Let the sound of heaven erupt in this place this morning. Let the sound of heaven erupt in this altar. Let the sound of heaven erupt in this altar. Oh God. That's it. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Lift up your voice. Let the sound of heaven come out of you this morning. Let the sound of heaven come out of you this morning. Breathe on us, God. Breathe on us. Breath of God. Breathe in the believer's church today. Breathe. There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Breathe, 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 breathe. Oh, rabarakaya hasha. Harabarakara nanaya. God, I didn't take 60 minutes just to give you six. God, I want you to move. I give you this service. Lord, move, 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 move. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breath of God. Harabarataranara. Breath of God. Oh, sound of heaven. Heaven. Sound of heaven. That's it. That's it, church. Come on. That's it, church. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. He hears you. He hears his church when we pray. He hears his church when we groan and moan. He hears his church when we cry out to him. Oh, I'm connecting to heaven. I'm connecting to another world this morning. Oh, this anointing that I have, I didn't get it. I didn't get it at Walmart. I got it from another world. I got it from another world. This fire in my bones, I didn't just find it on a street corner. I got it from another world. Hey, I'm plugged into another world today. I'm plugged into heaven. Oh, holy ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Yes, 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 yes. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. It's on you, it's on you, it's on you right now. It's on you right now. It's on you right now. A touch from another world is coming on you right now. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. Some of you are going to receive the Holy Ghost right now. A touch from another world is coming on you right now. A touch from another land. A sound from another country. A language from another country you've never been to is coming out of you right now that's it I hear the sound of heaven I hear the sound of heaven rising I, oh there it is I hear hey, 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 hey. I hear the sound of heaven oh oh Yes, 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 yes. I hear the sound of heaven. I hear the sound of heaven. <laughs> Yes! 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 
Yes! Yes! And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. And it filled all the house. It filled all the house. Lord, let it fill the house. Let it fill this house, God. Let it fill this house, God. Let it fill this house. Let it fill this house. <laughs> Let it fill this house of God. <laughs> These are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days, saith God. I pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your sons, your sons, and your daughters, your daughters, the prophesy. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I hear the sound of heaven. I hear the sound of heaven. <laughs> I hear the sound of heaven. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, if they'll just humble themselves. If they'll just humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear them from heaven. Yeah, I'm 
of the king right now. Heaven has opened up over this service. Receive it by faith. The violent, take it by force. Come on. Come on. I'm pressing my way in right now. I'm pressing my way in right now. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. My God, it's on you, it's on you, it's on you, it's on you, it's on you. It's on you, it's on you, it's on you. Let it come out of you. Let it flow through you. Let it resonate, let it echo. this morning he's visiting his church it's the sound of heaven it's the sound of heaven (laughs) my God my God is just flowing it's just flowing in this place it's just flowing, it's just flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing in this place. Oh, it's like waves, it's like waves of glory, waves of glory. My God, there's impartation happening in this room. It's coming right from heaven. It's coming right from heaven. It's coming not from a book. It's coming from another world. <laughs> That it's coming not from a seminar, but it's coming from another world. God 
Lord's about to give somebody a sound. <laughs> hey, hey. All over this room, just open your mouth one more time and give God praise. Just open your mouth and give God praise. Speak out what he's given you right now. If you've never spoken in tongues, open your mouth and speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Somebody speak it out. Oh, somebody's going to groan in the spirit. That's all right. Oh, somebody's going to prophesy over their situation. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to speak the word of God. Somebody's going to speak a promise of the Lord out loud. Say 
hands to heaven, begin to give him praise. Just worship the Lord for what happened here today. Great God. Thank you, Jesus. This is your doing and it's marvelous in our sight. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of things happen here tonight, this morning. Just a little gleam of what happened here to, this morning. As we were praying and the Lord opened my eyes. And I see the Lord taking people from a shallow level to a deeper level in the realm of the Spirit. I see the Lord saying, come here, leave that shallow level into a deeper level where the glory cover the whole of your body. And you are not seen, but Jesus is seen. You are not heard, but Jesus is heard from you. Where the Lord consume your voice and the voice of Christ scream out of you. To that level where Paul said, it's no longer I that live, uh, but Christ that lives in me. It's Christ living in me. I also saw a deposit of wisdom upon somebody here this day. The spirit of the gift of wisdom came upon somebody mightily in their service today. And the Lord is saying, live here, not as with a mind you came with as a different person and go do my will. You no longer see yourself as the person that came here, but you see yourself as somebody that have met with Christ, that have met with the Holy Spirit today. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. My God, there's a mighty power of God yet. I can feel He's so strong here this morning. He's so strong. The power of God is so strong here today. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I see the Lord touching somebody's ears and opening your ears. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way as we leave today. We're ready to walk with you. You open us up to the sound, sound from you. We had a sound today, and we walk according to your will. Lord, you told us today that we are gift to our world. Help us to be the gift from you to our word this week in Jesus name have your way Lord Amen, you're blessed